2.09 p.m. Wednesday, July 6th, 2022. It's about 10 hours since I recorded the video that is still currently uploading. It's somewhat short. It will certainly be online before this even begins because I'm going to wait until I get to town to send this one up. I'm also, I think, going to have a short impression fairly shortly here as well after I get done with this. <clears throat> so, look. <sighs> the world we're living in right now. Well, let me let me rephrase that. The culture the society. Tolkien would call the world of men with a capital M. What is going on basically right now is that, and I don't mean like a, a new event has happened and now I'm speaking. I'm just, this is just a thought. It is full of tribalism, it is full of extremes, it is full of infantile oversimplification, both of ideas, arguments, and personalities, people, which is dumb. A lot of people have ideas that maybe they can solve the problem. Really, the only people in a position to solve the problem are, in fact, the people who caused the problem. But, though that may be a, like a logical closure kind of concept, that, well, I mean, at least they've got a plan, right? Uh, a silver lining to the cloud or whatever. The reality is, is that anybody who is willing to cause problems so that they can swoop in and solve problems, we could do without to begin with and divvy up their resources. Just saying. Finally, a lot of people are starting to wake up, like really wake up, people that you would not have expected to are starting to understand that we are all getting fucked. All of us. That it is not a political, religious, spiritual, well, it's a spiritual battle, but it is not an ideological thing. It is barely a class thing. Most of us don't choose the class that we live in. But being uh, class warfare against simply for not having been born with a, a silver version of this in your mouth. How in the hell did you come out your mom with a spoon in your mouth? I can't, I don't even know. But those people, they may have a solution, but they are not worth entertaining. Some believe that the people that are causing the problems and and you can't even necessarily at this time conclusively lump them in as a single group. But these people are acting generally in the same capacity, the same uh, target goals. Whether it's a standalone complex, whether it's a conspiracy, I don't know. Some of them conspire, but whether all of them conspire together, uh, no proof. What we do have is things like the Georgia Guidestones. Somebody mysteriously erects, people say that it's a globalist thing, other people think it's a Freemason thing because the local Masons were the ones that put it together. <clears throat> that thing got bombed. I don't, I gotta wonder which 
which of the stones specifically was bombed, what side of which stone the explosive was planted at, which, because supposedly it seems got like 20 languages on it of the same instructions in all these languages. So the thing is, which language was the target of the explosion? That could be very uh, elucidating or enlightening. Um, a lot of things happen in the world that seem to have some really wild, not coincidence like the joke I made at the start of the video kind of thing. Or I should say at the previous video. I think it was the previous video that was the coincidences. Yeah, it was the last video. The one that I just mentioned at the beginning of the video that is uploading at the time of this recording. Other coincidences. Higher power looking. Those with eyes to see may notice these things quite often after the fact. Sometimes you can see things before the fact. Airport bureaus cover the economist, stuff like that sometimes. But also things like what folks would refer to as predictive programming. Um, not that I'm an advocate or, or believer, strictly speaking, in that being anything. Um, it could be pareidolia, it could be a lot of things. It, and it, it could be the predictions of trends that are obvious to certain aspects of collective unconscious or consciousness as a whole that move through the subconscious via the unconscious because people don't realize where the idea is coming from. And this archetypal idea of prediction comes through, manifests in the form of some piece of entertainment or pop culture that then people after the fact realize, hey, wow, that thing was pretty spot on for what actually happened. So I want to know on the guide stones, which language was the one that was bombed? Nobody's talking about that. They're talking about what the guide stones are, what their interpretation or their idea or their guess as to their meaning is. And the meaning or the purpose may be something else, but the meaning in this case is just basically what it says on the thing. There are suggestions, there are ideas, ways to go. Um, none of them that I particularly disagree with, including the 500 million population of Earth. So the thing is, I'm not a globalist. I'm not into communism. I'm not into being governed. I'm not a nationalist. I like it here. I love the Constitution. I think the way that our system of administration and management and unfortunately enforcement of, you know, the social contract or whatever, or I should say, unfortunately enforcement in ways that are not in the spirit of the law of the Constitution. Um, it beats everywhere else. And I don't want this to have to change. No, oh, who cares what you want, Rob? Yeah, totally, I get it, I get it. But we do have a good thing going here. Powerful country, strong economy, a threat to other countries, and it is only fair, as I've said in the past, that they compete and if we lose fairly, then we lose fairly. But as stated in the previous video, which is still uploading at this time, once a certain event occurs, death is inevitable for the country. Um... So I'm not, not into the idea of any of the particular individuals, nor do I at this time see that there is any, any one person, group, or organization competent to the task of governing a planet. This will lead to something like AI. And there are many, many examples in science fiction of... Now, remember what I just said about possible causes behind what people refer to sometimes as predictive programming and other fun coincidences and things in the world that happen that seem to correlate with other things. Spooky action at a distance. 
which turned out to actually be a real scientifically provable thing. So we got to wonder about some of this stuff. Nature of reality kind of thing. Is it simulated? Is it created? Is it random? You know. So, until I find out which piece of that tablet was destroyed, can't really venture any farther on, I guess. I, I am curious. I am very curious as to which language was the one that got destroyed. Probably the one in English because people are dumb and the person wouldn't understand anything else. And it's like, ugh. I mean, it's still symbolic. It still fits, but curious if it's a different country. Yeah, because that then gives question to who actually did it. But so here's the thing, 500 million humans could live in harmony with nature because they would not all be living together in the same place. Or they could live somewhat close together or they could only inhabit one continent or who knows what. But because we don't know the origin, we don't know the full full truth of the situation could be anything from like I said simulations aliens anything um you know if it's aliens it's one of those you know reduce the population keep them in the, the corral which we'll call North America and then the uh you know the aliens colonize the rest of the other half of the planet Eurasia and Africa you know or they put all everyone could you fit 500 million people comfortably in Australia you know So, yeah, I think some people might be waking up. They are realizing that we are all being manipulated, that it is not necessarily as a lot of people have been led to believe, because, frankly speaking, to be quite honest, from my own experiences, the so-called truth community got co-opted a very long time ago. And possibly before even, the, like, I started up getting into that stuff in, like, 2003, the Iraq war rollout, it really just did not click with the reasoning being there and why they said we were there did not align, especially given the circumstances with Afghanistan and the September 11th attacks and the reasoning given for the, the changes in laws, the, the surveillance, um, limitations in speech, what ultimately became limitations in habeas corpus, your right to face your accuser. open container with a fly bothering it. <clears throat> the truth community, or the grouping, gathering, attempted uh, communication amongst each other of individuals who do not believe the narrative for whatever reason, and they want to talk about what they think it means, was typically done once the internet became a thing. It was done in discussion groups on large mainstream sites because that's where people were at and a lot of those ended up being monitored subsequently infiltrated by bad actors posing as members and ultimately groupthink could be arrived at by having all these people think that they're being told a secret by it's the same thing as all these different fbi and on q and on megan on all of them they're just people playing a game pretending to be something and guiding the thoughts of others when one person says something and 15 people who are paid to say, yeah, what they said, say that. A lot of other people see that and they go with it. Oh, okay, cool. Well, they must know something I don't. That's why we're searching for truth. And so you have people who are legit knowledge seekers and you have other people who are curious. They want to know. They, they, they have the pull, the magnetism to it. 
but they just want to be led in the direction of truth. They don't want to seek truth. That was co-opted a very long time ago. There is no truth movement. There are only people who, for however their capacity, quest toward truth, prefer truth, are being misled as well. Like I said, people are waking up. They're waking up in a way that online discussion has become too difficult, too risky, that really a lot of this stuff, they will see content and then they will go talk to other people in person. Did you see this? What do you think of this? Now, yes, there are gullible, fully controlled, fully demoralized idiots on all sides, but there are. And these people... They're, they're literally the ones Morpheus warned Neo about in the scene with the woman in the red dress. They will fight to keep their system intact, even if they don't realize it's a control system that they are fighting to defend. There is, uh, as an analog to this, there is a brilliant, difficult, but very fun game called Fujitsu, Fujitsu Defender. And it is one of the most notoriously difficult uh, flash-based tower defense games. Very simple graphics, very simple setup, but the engine is, I don't want to say perfect, but it's solid. It plays great. It's so hard. I've gotten to level two like once or twice. It's hard. But here's the thing. Fujitsu is a corporation. It is being invaded by protesters and people who want to crush this large multinational in Japan that would be a Kiretsu company. This is a large conglomerate. This is the 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 Wayland Wayland Yutani. Uh, this is the um, uh, what you call it the uh, the company that makes the Nexus in Blade Runner. It is the mega, mega corporation. And your job is to defend the mega, mega corporation from the horde of invading protests and haters and whatnot else. And it's hard. It's difficult. It's nearly impossible to beat because the people are that pissed, apparently. There's a joke in there, is what I'm getting at. So, there's a few people that are... It's not so much that they're going to defend the Fujitsu so much as they're going to attack other tribes rather than realize that we are all under attack. We are all one tribe, as it were. Even if we disagree or differ on things that we consider to be major. Now, into the disagreements tied in with that censorship and everything else, it has now become acceptable in the mainstream to bash the president and the Democrats. Some of their plan has become obvious. What seems to be going on is that first they tried to pipe Piper Donald Trump so that Hillary Clinton would win, and that backfired spectacularly, famously, bigly. And after that, last, you know, they, they tried to keep people's attention focused on the guy by only basically talking about him, ragging on him. Now they want to try and stop him from running. So they say they're doing all this stuff, which really is not working. Somehow they are doing the work of the good guys by accident in much the same way as the globalists and the people who erected those guide stones have, assuming it's not a simulation or aliens, um, people who erected the guide stones have the right idea on there, but from how they're going to achieve those ends is a different story.
likewise, the Democrat Party is, I don't, I don't think that they are trying to accidentally own gold. But it looks like they are. But ultimately, they're going to bring everyone into the direction of waking up, realizing exactly how stupid they've been, realizing exactly how lied to they've been, and realizing it's time to make a change. If the sample sizes are accurate and fair, assuming there is not too much bias, there are now two polls, one suggesting that a third of young Democrat men, young Republican women, and, you know, lower numbers, more like a quarter of the Republican men of the older branch and the Democrat men uh, Democrat women of the, I think, the, the older branch comes to something like 30 to 40 percent were polled and found to have been in favor of some type of violence to achieve political ends or correct the current situation. The second one that came out being something to the effect of one in four or about a quarter of Americans believe it may be necessary soon to take up arms against people in the government. I'm sure the government is aware of this. That's why we're having all these fun shootings and talking about gun control. Uh, look at Canada. Their prime minister really, really stepped over the line with their Emergencies Act. And right now, he's basically running amok in Parliament. Nobody is able to stop him. These laws are being made. These things are being passed. These changes are happening. The people are not happy about it. The representatives are completely impotent in a parliamentary system. It is really just a bunch of people hooting and hollering. Very little gets done. It's entertaining, but is it constructive? So... Look at that versus look at where the laws are going here. But at the same time, look at what the executive and legislative, the elected and appointed positions, they're not life, uh, lifetime terms like judges. Look at what they're pushing. Look at what they're talking about. Look at what they're arguing about. First of all, it's possible that the numbers on those polls may actually be underreported. They may also be overreported, but they might be underreported because on some level, at a very, you know, slightly agree on a poll kind of level, I think a lot of people are like realizing because it's it's becoming in vogue now to acknowledge the failures of this administration to acknowledge everywhere that they've lied, everywhere that they've failed, and that all of the rumors of corruption that were tried to be swept under the rug at election time in 2020 were in fact all real and true. People are waking up. People are realizing exactly how fucked we might be and why fighting each other is the last thing we ought to be doing. But when you see those people, if there's going to come to a uh, a real civil strife, civil war. It won't just be riots. It will be towns shutting down those idiots. That will be what we will see. The news may not report on that, but that is what we will see. Last thing I'd like to mention is a capstone of the last three years. As I only have about a minute left. Excess mortality numbers are beginning to roll in. There wasn't that much. I mean, we knew from the statistics some, a few more, but at the same time we have, you know, increases in other 
mortalities as well. So British data from the last year shows a number of, shall we say, uh, considerable excess deaths by percentage versus the average that are not related to the virus. Could be a few things that it might be related to and things that happened during the shutdown happening here now as well. We're talking about abuse, ODs, self-termination, as well as side effects. So that's all for this video. This will upload once I get into town and uh, everybody have a good Wednesday. Uh,